Oh my god, what is all this? Looks like a hot mess. Oh hi there, fellow investors. Are you also feeling lost and confused when trying to navigate the interactive brokers platform? Do you feel like drowning in a sea of buttons and options? Well, fear not my friends, because today I'm gonna show you 10 tips how you can master this beast of a platform. Trust me, myself, I spent countless of hours staring at the screen, trying to decipher what it all means. But after many sleepless nights and copious amounts of coffee, I finally cracked the code. So let's dive right in and let me show you how you can use interactive brokers like a pro. Let's go. If you've never used interactive brokers before, then I have a whole playlist around it where I also have a deep dive tutorial so you can really familiarize yourself with the platform. But in this video, we really want to focus on the tips and tricks how to get the most out of the platform. So the first thing has to do with depositing money. Myself, I'm actually based in Europe. And as you can see, my account is based in Europe. That's my base currency. However, I buy stocks in Europe, but also in the US. And if you buy stocks in the US, obviously you need dollars to invest. So what you can do, unfortunately, through interactive brokers, you cannot exchange from your base currency to other currencies. You can only exchange other currencies to your base currency. So if I had dollars, I can exchange them back to euros. But sadly, I cannot exchange my euros into dollars. Now, what I could do is directly deposit dollars into my account. And you would do that by going into deposit funds over here, obviously. And then you could choose that option if you wanted to. And then you could use a new deposit option and make the deposit. In the past, as you can see over here, I used Revolut and that is a good option. However, the only issue is it takes up to 10 days that you have your money ready to use. The transfer itself goes fairly fast. I think it was in one or two days in my account, but then it sits there for up to 10 days until you can actually use that money. So for me, that really is a little bit slow. It is the cheapest option, obviously, but there's a much faster way that they recently added, and that is using WISE. If you haven't done it before, you won't see that option. As you can see, I've used it already, so it's right there. But let's say it's the first time for you, just click on new deposit method, and then you would just go over here. And previously, you would only have the option over here, and that would be for regular transfers. But here, you can say transfer WISE balance. So you would click on that, and then basically, the first time, if you haven't done it before, it asks you to link your interactive brokers account to WISE accounts. So you would obviously log in with your WISE details and obviously give the permissions for interactive brokers to access it. And then it will be linked right away. And as you can see over here, it already sees my balance, what I have in my WISE account right now. Obviously, you need some kind of money in there. So what I do, I send from my Revolut to my WISE. In my WISE, I exchange it to dollars and then I can withdraw the dollars immediately from my WISE account into interactive brokers. So right now I have $317 sitting over there. So I could just say, import all my money over there. So what I would be getting, there's a tiny fee of 39 cents, which is really reasonable. And then I could just say, right, go ahead, continue. I would get a quick summary what it is. I say confirm. Then you would just confirm with your wise password over here. Click on done. Now I got a notification on my phone. Do you want to do a transfer? I will say yes. And boom, it will take a second. And as you can see over here, transfer has been done. So that's super, super fast and really love it. That's probably the best way to go about it. The second tip has to do with changing your base currency. So in case the majority of your investments are actually based in US dollars, even though you're based in other countries that is not necessarily dollar dominated, you can actually change your base currency. And that might make sense for many. So let me show you how you're going to do that. You're going to click on your name over here go into settings and then you're going to scroll down to account reporting and here you see base currency. So click on that and here you can see very simply how you can change your base currency and you can select from a number of them. In case you invest mostly in the US, it really might make sense to change it to USD. So all you have to do is basically click USD and then click on save. It won't be updated immediately, but on the next trading day, all your accounts will be displayed in USD. Now that might be very smart and I'm actually thinking to do this in the future. And by having it in USD, what I can do is with my Revolut account, make a local transfer which is free of charge in euros and then I would have the euros immediately in my account literally for me it takes 20 minutes the transfer is done and I have it in my interactive brokers account and from there I can easily then convert my euros into dollars through interactive brokers I would go over here and then basically click on convert currency and then once my base currency is dollars and then I could select euros how much I have and then I would select dollars to transfer to and then I can click the amount and transfer my euros into dollars it will finally allow me because my base currency is dollars they will charge you a two dollar exchange fee but the exchange exchange rate you get is probably the best possible exchange rate out there. So especially if you change a larger amount, that's definitely going to be the best option and even cheaper than Y. So if you really invest a lot in USD, you have to look at your portfolio. If that's the majority, then it might probably make sense to exchange your account base currency to USD rather than your local currency. But 
have a look for yourself. If of course majority of your holdings is euro based, then it probably makes sense to keep it in euros and then use the wise transfer I showed you to regularly buy some US stocks if you wanted to. Now the next point has to do with commissions. Now obviously interactive brokers does charge certain commissions, especially for non-US customers. In the US itself, they do have commission free trading, but for all non-US citizens, there is a small commission. For example, you can go over here on orders and trades and see your last trades and you will see immediately what are the commissions that have been charged. Over here you can see 35 cents, 1 euro 25, 0 cents, 35 cents. So on most of them, there will be small commission. However, having said that, at the same time, they do give you the best prices. There's no artificial markup because a lot of brokers, they say it's commission free, but then when you pay the price for a stock or ETF, it's actually a little bit higher than the real market value is. So they kind of hide it in the purchasing price. So in that way, for me, I prefer a really transparent pricing. However, there is a way to reduce your commissions even further. If you are a non-US citizen, most likely you're gonna be starting off on the interactive brokers pro plan and by default you're going to be on the fixed tier pricing plan but i really strongly suggest you unless you trade huge volumes for you and me and most investors out there the tiered pricing plan is actually a much better option so let me show you how you can change it so what you want to do is go back into your settings over here go down to accounts configuration and over here you can see ibkr pricing plan as you can see it says ibkr pro stocks and tiers because i've changed it already initially it said fixed so once you click onto it, you can see here the pricing plan. And as you can see, previously it was on fixed, but I changed it to tiers. And that applies to both stocks and ETFs. And you can click over here to get more insights into the pricing structure. And here you can have a look for yourself, change the country wherever you invest mostly. But basically you can see already fixed is as it says fixed and then tiered obviously depending on the volume levels. But you can see minimum order is only 35 cents versus with the fixed, it always will be $1. So for me, you know, if I trade more often but smaller positions, that already helps. And then you can obviously go down and have a look at different countries but honestly in my case going to tiered definitely saved me a lot of commissions the next one is not an actual tip but a little bonus i still want to throw in because some people ask me but kai when i log in the first time all my screen is white and for me i always prefer dark mode so what you can do is very easy you click once again on your name over here and then you can click from light you can change it back to light if you wanted to prefer that or as I always like it, dark. So that's really easy. And you know, it's just easy to do and you can do the same on the various apps they have. The next tip has to do with customizing the way your portfolio is shown. So when you click into portfolio over here, this is not how it looks the first time. Most likely you're gonna have more space between it and you can easily click between those two buttons to change the spacing. I prefer to have it compact because as I'm gonna own more shares, this list is gonna be longer. So I can easily see what's happening there with my portfolio. And then from here, you can also customize your columns. So you can just click on the three dots over here and then click on edit columns. And from here, you can very easily add or remove certain positions because that's not the way it looks in the beginning. For example, most likely in the beginning, you will have daily changes. And for me, I don't wanna see daily changes in my portfolio. Quite often in a bear market, it's red and I'm a long-term investor, so I don't need to see daily moves. I just wanna see long-term portfolio development. One thing I've added myself, which previously you didn't see easily, was the dividend yield because I'm a dividend growth investor. So for me, seeing the dividend of my stock is very important. And you can just go over here, search all columns. And then for example, you would see dividend, click it, and then you will see all the measures that you can see in your column related to dividends. So you can click whatever you wanna see over here. I have a dividend yield. You can also see the actual dividend score. You would just click the plus and then will be added. So have a look around whatever suits you the most. From here, you can also change the order by dragging them around. That's how I set it up and I'll run you through in a second why I have it set that way. So basically, firstly, obviously I have my instruments, all my holdings, and then I sort them by market value. So this is the value that currently my stocks or ETFs are worth. So at the moment, you can see my biggest one is the VUSA ETF and you can change the order by clicking this arrow over here so you have the smallest holding at the top but for me it makes sense to have the biggest holding at the top so i have it sorted by that then i can see the cost basis how much i paid for it versus how much it's worth it right now so obviously for most of them i've paid more than the stocks dropped and obviously that's the difference that's the unrealized pnl if i was to sell that stock or etf today i would be basically losing 1000 euros in this particular example i currently have a dividend yield on all of them except for one stock which is google so that's also good immediately you can see how much dividend yield I get. If you're dividend growth investors, obviously going forward, I'll be investing more in some that have a bigger yield and bigger growth potential and less in some that don't have yield, for example. Then I can see the positions. That's basically the amount of shares I own in the stock or ETF. Then you can see here the last price and the average price. That's the average price you paid over the various times. So it kind of averages out the price. And obviously, ideally, it should be lower than the current last price. And lastly, that's the percentage of my holdings relative to my total holdings. So right now you can see 
I have the majority of my holdings in the VUSA ETF, that's 62%. That's also good to see, you know, are you over leveraged in one stock or ETF? And maybe you want to balance it more going forward. Next up, let's talk about how you can customize your charting. Because honestly, the first time I saw the charts, it was a little bit overwhelming. So let's click into Coca-Cola, one of my favorite dividend growth stocks. And then obviously this is how I set my chart up. But the first time we log in, it might be looking a little bit more overwhelming. And it's very easy actually to customize. So you can see over here immediately, to be honest, I prefer having a simple line. Now, a lot of you might prefer candles, but as I'm not day trading or swing trading, you know, I'm buy and hold. So for me, I just want to see overall trend of a stock. So that's why I prefer a simple, nice line. And then it just makes things so much easier to look at. You can change also the interval over here, how many seconds, but usually I have it for a week. And then obviously also at the beginning, when I look at something, I keep it at five here because I want to see the long-term trend of a particular stock. And then you can add some more indicators if you want different averages, etc. Uh, but I don't have it. The only thing I have down here is the volume, how the volume changes over time, more people buying, less people buying. So that's really good. And then you can change some more settings over here, chart settings. For example, if you want to change the color of the line, I quite like this color. So I could change it to that. I could have yellow, whatever you want, whatever is easier on your eye, you can change it, the thickness of the line, but I'm happy with that. You can have the last price displayed or not. You can see how immediately it switched on or off. So that's up to you. You can go into the status line over here and add a few more and just play around with it. And then you have the scale line over here. For example, I could have the label displayed, but you know, obviously I don't need it. So just like it, the cleaner for me, the better. I just want to focus on the overall trend and direction of the stock price. Plus button, for example, I don't need, so I could remove that. And I like to remove this indicator value labels. So you can see immediately the graph is expanded a little bit more. And from here, you could obviously also save your snapshots. So you just go over here and I would call it Kai's snapshot, save, and boom, I would have that saved for the future. Right, the next one has to do with the mobile apps. And actually not many people know that they have three mobile apps available. So in fact, the most common one is the interactive brokers. That's probably the most complete and the one that actually resembles the online platform the most. So he can do pretty much everything you can do on your web portal online. So that's really the most complete app but at the same time also most overwhelming, I think, because yeah, it can be really quite intimidating at first. So then what I always recommend and probably use myself mostly is the global trader apps. So as you can see, immediately it looks much cleaner. If I go into my portfolio over here, you can see all the holdings with the name. It is just easier to see on the eye. If I go into Apple, for example, you know, a much simpler chart and it's just, you know, more user friendly, like Lightyear, Free Trade, Revolut Trading. So obviously a much better option if you're just starting off and have basic needs you know you don't want to have too many complicated things you want to see the stock price you want to place a buy order very simple to do and yeah i just definitely prefer that for everyday use and just to check on my portfolio and lastly there's also the impact app so this is actually very similar to the global trader app but it integrates the impact esg score of your portfolio how is your investing going in line with your values as an investor so impact is really the forefront here. you can see immediately the impact score if you click in the portfolio it looks very similar like global trader but you see the addition everywhere of your impact score. So the impact is very much highlighted over here because a lot of investors are very much conscious of the impact on the investments. If I go into here, I have all the details of what Apple is doing, where potential issues are with my values versus their practices as a company. So if that's important for you, then probably that will be your best bet for myself. I use Global Trader mostly. Also, I use that app in order to log into the web portal because whenever I log in, I get a push notification on my phone and I confirm it over here with my face ID and then it lets me log in online. One more tip I want to show you is changing the default purchasing quantity because the first time when you log in and you want to buy a share or ETF, it usually offers you to buy 100 shares of something. And for example, recently I bought BlackRock and that's around $800 per share. So times 100, you can imagine that's really expensive. So obviously I could just easily change it, but why not to have your default immediately set as you wanted to? And funnily enough, you cannot do this online. You can only do this through the IBKR app. So let's open it up and log in over here. And then what you want to do is click down here at the bottom more then go over here to configurations and then you want to click over here on trade settings and then you want to go over to stocks and here you can change some of the default parameters of your stock buys. For example, do you always want the market order, which in my case, it is a market order or the timing for me, it's always time and force day, but here I can change the size order quantity. So you can click over here and you can choose, do you want to display it in shares 
or in an amount. Usually I buy in an amount because I usually buy fractional shares because some stocks cost $2,000, right? So I don't want to buy a whole stock of that. I might just want to buy two, 300 euros worth of that stock. So for me, I leave it at amount, but default it's actually shares. So every time you want to make a buy, it always shows you the shares you want to buy. But I prefer to show the amount of dollars or euros I want to buy. So I leave it on amount and then I set it to 300 euros, which is usually my average order size, but you can put it to anything. You can put it to 10, 20, 100, 5,000, whatever you want. So now having changed the settings, I can show you how it looks. Let's go into my portfolio and let's say I want to buy some more Louis Vuitton. I would go over here, click on buy, and then you can see immediately it shows the quantity 300 euros, which would be worth around 0.38 shares. And normally for you, if you've never done it before, it would show in terms of shares, 100 shares, and it would just be overwhelming. So for me, in case I wanted to buy worth 250, I could just easily change it over here. So it's a small thing, but honestly, the more you trade, it just saves you time and makes the trading process so much easier. Next up has to do with seeing your dividends because in interactive brokers, it's really hard to see your dividends. And as a dividend growth investor, for me, getting dividends is so exciting. I want to see how the dividends grow over time. And it's really, really difficult to see that in interactive brokers. That's why I'm actually using a tool called Dividend Watch. And if you haven't checked it out yet, then please use my link in the description below to get you started. It's really an amazing tool. It can automatically sync up with the Interactive Brokers account, or you can also manually import it from any other broker that you use. And you can see here over time how my dividends have been growing, which is great to see, you know, what have been the payouts, what is the next payouts coming up very soon, annual breakdown over time. So it's a much better way of showing it. However, recently Interactive Brokers has made some changes, but it's a little bit hidden. So where you want to go is over here in Performance and Reports, and then click on Portfolio Analyst, which is actually quite a powerful tool to really get a deep dive analysis of your portfolio, especially the longer you have been investing and the bigger your portfolio, you really get some good insights. So now, honestly, I quite like it over here, the information you get. It's really, really powerful and much better than many other of the Neo brokers. So where you want to go is into widgets, and then kind of remove or add any if you want. And then you can once again move them around. For me, my projected income is the most important because I'm a dividend growth investor. So that's why I have it over here. And you can see here, that's my projected income for the full year. If I scroll down over here, it shows me for this year, I'm estimated to get around 246 euros worth of dividend income. Now, obviously it's really a tiny amount, but the more I've been investing, it grew. Last year it was only 140. It already grew by 100 euros. And now that I'm consciously adding more into dividend stocks and less into low yielding stocks or no dividend paying stocks, that number is definitely going to grow in the future. And every time I log into the active brokers, I'm always going to go here and see, you know, how that number grows over time. The next tip has to do with a really powerful report that really gives you the most deep dive analysis you could possibly want. So what you want to do is once again, go to performance and reports, click to portfolio analyst. So once you're in here, you can go onto reports and here you have the default reports and then you want to click since inception. That's basically any trades and activity from the very first day you opened your interactive brokers account. Then you want to click on detailed PDF and it will download, take a second and boom, you really have the most possible deep dive you could have about your portfolio. I mean, it's 33 pages of deep dive analysis into your portfolio, various reports, income projections, etc. I mean, it's really, really powerful. I mean, one day, just take the time and really go through it. And it's actually really insightful. I learned quite a bit of things, especially what is in my ETF included, etc. So really, really good. And on one of the last pages, you can see over here a bit more insights about your projected income or your dividends. Once again, you can see over here estimated income for 2023, 246 and remaining 235 because the balance I've been already paid out for. You can see here by which months you get what revenue from which particular stock, what kind of dividend it is. So really, really a powerful graph. Obviously, you're not going to read that every single week, but if you wanted to, you can have it automated over here, reports delivery, you can click on it, select the report you want to have, let's say since inception, and then it can send you every single month that full report into your email right away. So you don't even have to go here to download it and really you get an idea of what's happening with your overall portfolio, which is really nice. The next point has to do with looking for stock because the first time when people sign up, they find it so overwhelming to find a particular stock, especially to see where it trades. On some of the apps on the phone, it's very simple. You just put the name, you see the logo, you select it, and you can buy it right away. On interactive brokers, the fact that they serve possibly the most amount of stock markets around the world, you can find any possible instrument on here, it makes it sometimes very challenging to find exactly what you're looking for. For example, if we look for Johnson & Johnson, a stock I want to buy more of in the future, I can see already here quite a number of different places I could buy it. For example, I could buy it at the New York Stock Exchange. I could buy it in Ibis, which is Frankfurt basically, in Germany, right, in Euro-based. I could buy it in Mexico. So the first time when you look it up, you may not be familiar with these abbreviations. These are the stock markets where it's listed. If I select this, it would be based in the US, so therefore I would buy with dollars. 
If I wanted to buy with euros, I could buy that as well. Then I would go through Frankfurt and etc. So you can even click on more results and then you can see your different derivatives of that. For example, stocks, I could buy a Johnson Johnson bond. I could buy different bonds listed even in China. So it's really, really overwhelming. So the first thing what you want to do is go over to Google and put interactive brokers and stock exchanges. And then it will bring you to the website where all the exchanges are listed. For example, I don't know what something means. I could go over here in Europe where I want to buy. And as I've shown you before, there was one stock exchange called EBIS. I would look for that and I could see etc. And that's basically based in Frankfurt. I can even click into it and it would take me there right away and I could get some more insights. The second thing what you want to change is hop over to your settings once again, then look for trading settings and then go to trading permissions. And from here you can change all the various things you can invest in. And obviously there's a lot to choose from, but as you can see, I pretty much disabled most of them because the more you have selected over here, whenever you look for something, I would be getting all these various places, for example, J and J options, J and J stock options, so many different things, futures I could invest in, but I I really don't want it. I just want to buy ETFs and stocks. So all I have selected is my stocks and obviously my currency exchange in order to exchange currency. So that's really important. Only select the ones you actively want to invest in. And one more thing I want to show you is how you can buy fractional shares because sometimes you might not have enough money to buy an entire stock. Once again, if something costs $3,000 or euros, you may not want to buy an entire share of that company, but you want to buy a fraction, 10 euros, 50 euros, 100 euros worth of the stock. And that you can change over here. If you go into the stock settings and then click on edit, here obviously you can select all the various markets. So in case you only want to buy in two, three specific markets, you can and unselect all the different markets and naturally when you look for a share it will not show you the stock in different markets but only on the stock exchanges that you have selected but in my case i still want to keep my options open that's why i have most of them enabled but you can obviously enable or disable as you please and lastly you want to go down here at the bottom where it says all global you want to select that and then global trade in fractions so sometimes that's not enabled by default and if that's not enabled you cannot buy fractional shares which i think is really really powerful and i use that myself all the time because i want to buy a dollar amount a euro amount not a share amount because the share price fluctuates, but let's say I have a thousand euros to invest every single month. But with that thousand euros, I might want to buy six different stocks and you know, the amount might not be enough for different shares. So that's why definitely enable fractional trading over here. And lastly, a feature that every broker should have, but sadly interactive brokers for some reason didn't have it for many, many years, but now they finally added it. And that's having automated buys in place. So basically you set it and forget it. You basically select the stock you want to buy, the amount you want to buy of, and then every day, week or month, it automatically buys it without you having to log in. You just want to make sure you have enough money in your account. And then interactive brokers will automatically trigger and execute that order for you. And that's very easy to do. You're just going to click over here and trade. And then you're going to click on recurrent investments. And from here, you can see any recurrent investments you have in place. I don't have it myself because, you know, I like to do it myself manually. But in case you want to have that set it and forget it option, you would click on create recurrent investments. And then basically you just have to select which stock you want to buy. So let's say I want to buy Coca-Cola. So I would put Co over here and then just click on search. And it will pull up the different options where I can buy it from. It shows me the currencies over here. But obviously I want to buy the original listed in the New York Stock Exchange in dollars. Fine, I select that. And then I can select the amount over here. So let's say I want to buy every week $100 worth of Coca-Cola stock. And then you have to select the interval. So you can choose here either daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, what have you. But let's say weekly. And then obviously it will trigger that order every week, depending on when you set the first day. So if you set it next Tuesday, it will buy every week on Tuesday. If that day is not a trading day, then it will execute the order the next trading day. In case there's a public holiday, it will do the next day. But otherwise, every Tuesday going forward, it will change it. Or you can change it to monthly. Whichever day you select it, it will then automatically execute that order for you without having to log in. But once again, obviously, you want to make sure you have the money in the account because if you have no money, it will not trigger that order. And then it will also automatically cancel that recurring order for the futures. And then you can select the end date and then continue and it will start executing those orders for you. I know interactive brokers can be really overwhelming at first and not the most prettiest interface, though I have to say that over the years they have been improving quite a lot. And I think with those tips I've shown you, you can really get used to it. And long term for wealth building, I really think it's one of the most powerful and trusted brokers you can possibly use. And if you haven't signed up to interactive brokers yet, then please use my link in the description below. In this video over here, I'm going to give you a deep dive tutorial into the interactive brokers platform i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give it a like subscribe to the channel it means the world to me as always thanks a lot for watching stay healthy get wealthy and i see you in the next one ciao